What's up guys, in this video, I wanna go through the difference of adding and subtracting rational expressions. And you might be thinking to yourself, why would I watch this video? Isn't adding and subtracting the same thing, except one you're adding and one you're subtracting? Well, if you're thinking that, then you would be mistaken because yes, the operations are just simply like a difference, right? But there's actually something very, very important that I want you to know about the difference between adding rational expressions and subtracting rational expressions. Now, the cool thing about that, the cool thing though, is yes, there is actually some things that we are commonalities between them, right? The first step we're always gonna do is find the LCD. So there's gonna be a lot of things that we're gonna do exactly the same, but where they diverge is not just as simply as let's add numbers and compare to subtract numbers. There's actually something very, very important that we have to be careful about, okay? So in this video, let's go ahead and determine the difference between adding as well as subtracting. Okay, so the first thing we always have to do whenever we are adding or subtracting rational expressions, the absolute first thing we need to do is find the LCD. Now again, remember the LCD is going to be the smallest um, term or expression that your denominators are going to evenly divide into. Now, a lot of times that gets confusing when we're dealing with polynomials. And so one thing that students like to rely on is just multiply the denominators and that's gonna be able to find your LCD, which is a solid technique to use. In this example though, that's not what we wanna do because maybe multiplying a trinomial times a binomial and that can get pretty um, difficult pretty quickly. So what I want you to be able to look at or think about is whenever you have a polynomial in your denominator and you're trying to find the LCD, if there's a way to simplify it, i.e. factoring, then look to be factoring, okay? Always look for factoring, especially when you see a quadratic trinomial, right? That's just like, I mean, that's a dead giveaway that you're gonna want to look into or try factoring it. Now, here's another technique that uh, your teacher might not always tell you to look for. Whenever you have a trinomial, right, and you're trying to identify the LCD, look at the other denominators. If you have another denominator that ha that is already in factored form or, you know, can't be simplified further, like in this case, X plus one, more likely than not, not all the time, but more likely than not, that is a factor of your other polynomial. So let's go and see if that's correct. So let's see if I have X plus one times what? would give me an x squared minus 2x minus 3. Again, I'm not. I don't know for sure, but I'm going to assume. Well, I need to multiply the 1 times a negative 3. So then this would have to be a negative 3 to get this right. And let's see if that works. x times x is x squared. That'd be a negative 3x. That's a 1x. So add together, give me a negative 2x. And then 1 times negative 3 is a negative 3. Hey, guess what? It works. So that is going to be my factored form. So the LCD, remember, is my smallest expression that my denominators, both of my denominators, evenly divide into. So in my LCD in this case, which is going to be my first step, it doesn't matter if you're adding or subtracting, is going to, has to contain everything in this denominator and everything in this denominator. Well, you can see that the X plus one is repeated, so I don't need to include it twice, right? You only need to include it that one time. So now we've identified our LCD. So that is going to be step number one. Find the LCD. Doesn't matter if you're adding or subtracting. And guess what? Step number two is actually going to be pretty easy as well. For step number two, all we're simply looking into doing is now obtaining the LCD for both of our expressions. And again, doesn't matter if you're adding or if you're subtracting, all we're trying to do is get the common denominator. Now, what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna go ahead and, we already, um, do I need to really write this on? No, nah, I, I, I mean, I guess you can like rewrite this here, right? As an X plus one times an X minus three. And you can do it over here as well, just so you can kind of have like that visual representation Okay, so notice here is an X plus one times X minus three. Over here, it's just an X plus one. So what do I need to do to obtain the X plus one or the X plus one times the X minus three? Oh, I need to put parentheses over here and I need to say, I need to multiply that whole thing by X minus three. Now, whatever you do in your denominator, you have to do in your denominator. Okay, and same thing over here, guys, right? I have to multiply by an X minus three. Now, don't write it like this because notice the difference here. See the difference here, I have parentheses. Here, I don't have parentheses. If you don't put parentheses here, technically, mathematically speaking, what you're saying is X plus a one times X minus three. Mm -mm, that's not what we want to do. We want to say quantity X plus one times X minus three. And then again, we're going to do this over here as well. Okay, now we have finally come to the point, guys, where we have our difference in our terms. Okay, this is extremely important. I need you to pay attention to this. When I have a plus one, this is technically saying a plus a one, okay? times the X plus three, right? Now here what happens, here's where my students will make a mistake. A lot of times students will see this as a positive one. They see the minus and they see this as a positive one. And that is incorrect thinking. Technically guys, what this is, is a negative one mean multiplied by a X minus a three. So what I like to be able to do 
is once I've been able to identify the um, common denominators, I'm just going to rewrite the whole expression before simplifying it all as my numerator. So what this shows here is a five plus a one times an X plus three, right? And that's going to be all over my common denominator of X plus one times an X minus three. Whereas over here, right, it's a five. So let's go to the simplifying point. Five minus a one times an X minus three. Because here's what students will make the mistake time and time again, guys, I can't even tell you. It's like the most common mistake that I see in the world, maybe not in the world, but it's a mistake that I've made uh, multiple times before, even like through teaching. And I see students make it all the time. And I'll give you a little tip. One way you can do this um, is one, show your work like I'm doing, but I understand sometimes students don't want to show their work. So they want to do their math in your head. So another thing you could do is just turn this into a addition problem, right? You can always change the subtraction problem by adding a negative. So that's another way you can get around this um, if you don't like just showing your work. But I think just showing your work is just an extra step, right? And this is so important because now you can distribute your positive one and here you're going to distribute your negative one. The reason why this is important here is because if you're just subtracting, like if you don't distribute the negative one, what a lot of times students will do is they'll just have a minus one times X, but they don't distribute the negative to this negative three. And that's where that mistake usually comes in. So now what we're going to have is now we just need to go ahead and simplify. So we're going to have an X plus um, a three. So this is going to be, and then five plus three is going to be an eight. So this would be a X plus eight all over a X plus one um, times a X minus three. And then over here, we're going to distribute the X. So that's going to be a negative X. And this would be a negative um, three. So that's going to be a positive eight, right? Why did I multiply by X minus three? Why did I do that wrong? Oh my God. I can't believe I made that mistake. That's so weird. I like caught that mistake for some reason. That's an X minus three, X minus three. Yeah, okay, I did that right. That's so weird. Okay, so let's fix this. Jeez. All right, so let me go and fix this now. So this would be an X minus a three. Um, so that's an X and that's gonna be minus three. So that's gonna be an X plus a two, right? Jeez, come on, Miss McLogan. So that's an X plus two. Um, so that is a x plus two, so x here. And then over here, what I'm going to be looking at is that's going to be a negative three, so that'd be an eight. So I'm just going to write it like this, an eight minus an x. And you can rewrite this as a negative x plus eight, depends on how what your teacher wants. And therefore, it'd be an x plus one times a x minus a three. So hopefully this was helpful for you can understand that adding and subtracting rational expressions is just not as simple as adding or subtracting. You got to be very careful when you're dealing with rational expressions. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. If it was, if you want more examples with rational expressions, then check out the next video I have right here.